paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, your common Gilbert style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Uh, as a researcher of old legal documents for many years, one day while com uh, com I was combing through all the old property records and wills in the small courthouse in central North Carolina, I stumbled on the prize of the century. In one of the old mill, uh, will books dated around 1840, I found the will of one A.A. A. Springs. Okay? Uh, they, used to be, they used to be known as Springsteen who I had misled uh, into believing uh, was the father of one Leroy Springs. He was at the time the person on whom the research was focused. Now, I'm going to stop right there just for a second just to let people know. All this research can be found in public records. They don't hide a thing, but not a lot of people go around in the public records. Everything in, the, in this book is in the public record, so just to let you know. Now, upon reading this will, I was shocked and amazed at the secret that it disclosed, but you have to remember that it is a known fact that wills, even though they are classified public records, the same as property and corporation, corporation deeds, are rarely combed through and, uh, and that I have been doing, okay? The practice of hiding secrets in public view can be assessed by anyone because you are the public. It is a double edge to, uh, uh, edge to it. This is because when things go nuts as far as ownership of land, they can always say, well, it was there in the public records in plain view uh, for anyone and all to find. Now, this is hilarious. This is the young Leroy Spring, a cousin of Abe's look at the resemblance, okay? This is a young Leroy Spring, a cousin of Abe's look at the resemblance, and he's right. There is a huge resemblance, okay? It says, in the will of A.A. A. Springs was the list of his property. I, it went into detail to whom the property was to be dispersed and is included in, uh, and it included his children. I was looking in the records to find out what uh, railroads and banks this man might have owned and had left to his son, Leroy Springs, but Leroy Springs was not his son. I didn't find anything like that, but we did find the prize of the century. On the bottom of the page, uh, page three of four pages, was a paragraph where the, par uh, the father left to his son an enormous amount of land in the state of Alabama, which amounted to the land that is today known as Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama. And then he went into detail in the name of the son, and, the fir uh, and at first I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but there it was, the name one, Abraham Lincoln. How could it be possible? Was this a mistake? No, it, uh, uh, it says, no, it wasn't. His son was Abraham Lincoln. Okay? with the information that we had already had about the Springs Springsteen family. This was just another twist to add with this already manipulative family. Refer to the chapter in the Springs. Okay, so you have to go to the Springs family to figure that out. So this is new information about Lincoln built a fire under me, and it was led to, uh, to take me. I'm going to skip forward because there's a, there's a story behind this. In the late spring of the year 1808, Nancy Hanks, who was the family lineage of McAdden family, was visiting some of her family in the community of Lincolnton, North Carolina. While on her stay with the family in the Carolinas, she visited with many of the neighboring families she had known for many years. One such visit was A.A. A. Springs' family. The sordid details had been uh, omitted, but obviously the young Nancy Hanks had found herself in a uh, compromised or comprised position and was forced to succumb to the lust of A.A. A. Springs. She became pregnant as a result. There were no details of a love affair or an act of violence on the helpless female. Abraham Lincoln were a result of that act. 
which leads one to wonder if the name of Lincoln was the real or the fabricated name of the area of conception, Lincolnton. Was there really a Thomas Lincoln? Since the springs were uh, of the race that called themselves Jews, that made Lincoln part Jewish and part of the Springs family. He also became a relative of the Rothschild family by blood. Now, this guy it was unbelievable. Lincoln, unbelievable what he did, okay? Lincoln was a dictator who destroyed the Republic and replaced the federal principles of 1789 with the ideological foundations of today's uh, uh, welfare, warfare state. His administration was characterized by paranoia, a lust for power, and rampant corruption. The magnitude of that paranoia was evidenced by Lincoln's Secretary of War, Edwin M. Stanton, who declared that every department of the government was paralyzed by treason. Traitors were to be found in the Senate and House of Representatives and the Cabinet and the Federal Courts. Treason was flagrant in the Revenue and in the Post Office Service, as well as the territorial governments and in the Judicial Reserves. In his bid for absolute power, Lincoln used treason as a pretext to unleash war and shred the Constitution. Freedom of the press was curtailed. Chicago Times was one of the over 300 northern uh, newspapers suppressed uh, for expressing incorrect views. As late as May 18, 1864, Lincoln ordered his military to arrest and imprison the editors, proprietors, and publishers of the New York World and uh, New York Journal of Commerce. Lincoln suspended habeas corpus. He criminalized speech and legalized arbitrary arrest. 20,000 political prisoners were held in, in, in communicado and denied legal counsel. Maryland's legislature was overthrown. The New York City was uh, placed under military occupation. In his uh, December 1861 lectures in Boston and New York City, Northern uh, abolitionist Wendell Phillips declared that we live today, every one of us, under martial law. The Secretary of State puts in his Bastille uh, 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 with a warrant as a, uh, irresponsible uh, as that of Louis the Fourteenth, any man whom uh, he pleases. Lincoln's war against the South was not to preserve the Union from treasonous secessionists. Lincoln himself had championed the right of secession. In the speech before Congress on the Mexican-American War, he declared that any people anywhere being inclined and having the power have the right to rise up and shake off an existing government and form a new one that suits them better. Nor did Lincoln wage war against the South to, emanci uh, to emancipate black slaves. In the first inaugural address on March 4, 1861, Lincoln emphatically declared, I have no purpose, directly or indirectly, to interfere with the institution of slavery in the states where it exists. I believe I have no lawful right to do so and have no inclination to do so. On September 11, 1861, Lincoln countermanded General Fremont's order freeing the slaves in Missouri. And on May 19, 1862, he countermanded General Hunter's order emancipating the slaves in Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. On August 22, 1862, Lincoln wrote Horace Greeley declaring, If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing uh, some of them, leaving others alone, I would do that also. With the demise of the Confederacy now nowhere in sight, however, Lincoln changed his position on emancipation. On September 13, 1862, Lincoln explained to the visiting delegation of the clergy in the purpose of his forthcoming Emancipation Proclamation, I view this matter as a practical war measure to be decided on according to the advantages and disadvantages it may offer to the suppression of the rebellion. That the Emancipation Proclamation was a practical war measure can be seen in the fact that it did not free a single slave within the jurisdiction of the Union. The proclamation only declared that all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of the state, a people uh, whereof shall then be a rebellion against the United States, and shall then, uh, shall be then, thenceforth and forever free. <laughs>